Okay, tonight we are etching and cutting brass. Uh, the brass is one millimeter, and Cameron's about to show you how the autofocus works on this machine. And this is the Monoport or Monport 100 watt MOPA fiber laser. So you just make sure that it's in the focus position, which the little red dot, which you can barely see if at all is where it's going to do the autofocus. Yeah, I can see the ones up top, but I can't, oh, that's oh, really faint. The, those are for yeah. manual focus. Okay. And then you push the autofocus button. Okay, so the head is lowering. That's nice. Oh, now it's raising, rising. Okay, so now it's auto-focused? Yep, and oh. you can see that the manual focus dots are now lined up with each other. Yeah, that looks like one dot. Okay. Oh, and I, I can see the faint auto-focus dot now. Okay. So. So I'm gonna slide it back a little bit. All right. your image went away on your screen. Okay, we're doing this ladybug. We're gonna be cutting and etching. Okay, and this is the heat sink with the fins, and it protects the bed of the laser from getting burnt the way the heat sink is. So we're etching first. And we're guessing on these settings. We're new and we're really new and we don't, we don't know what we're doing yet, but we're trying. It's really hard to see what the framing is. You're not sure it's positioned right? So where's it going to cut? Like, you've got this in that vise. Oh, I think I see. Where this... Where the square is. Yeah. And do the corner maybe. That makes sense. Always trying to conserve materials. Okay. All right. Are we good to go? Yeah. All right. So I'm just going to run the, the edge first and see how that looks. Okay. not starting. Right. Sometimes you have to hit start twice. I hit start twice. Huh. Sorry folks, I'm showing you this in real time and it's not going. Oh, it is going. It's just not enough power or something. Oh. You can actually see where it is. Okay, so it is etching. So it needs more power. Yeah. We're used to oh. sparks flying out of it. Actually, no, you can see it, but there's a very faint design that actually is etching. Okay, well. But yeah, it's probably not enough power. Let's see. So we'll need to, oh yeah, it is, okay. See, we're used to sparks flying out of this thing like crazy, but it's not making any noise. So it was working. Yep. Okay. Oh yeah, you can see it etching in on the camera now. And you can hear it a little bit. Very little. So do you think we're gonna have to do a second pass? Yeah. And see, it would be really nice. These green glasses we have on are just super dark. And so you can't see, like I can't see what you guys can see on the video at all. But it looks like it's doing 
maybe that's what the hatch means. Like it, yeah, it, it did 45 one direction, I was doing 45 in the opposite Okay, direction. yeah. So maybe it will be etched sufficiently, do you think? Well, I'm not sure, you can't really see much on the bottom. Yeah. So I'm not sure if it's a focus thing or, or what. So I think it's gonna need another etching. Well, I think you guys can see like some of what's going on. I'm not going to hold you this whole time, but I'll come back when we start cutting and I'll actually I'll uh, I'll come back when the etching is finished. Okay, we cranked up the settings for the etching. Turn it black. Oh no. Well, you, it'll be polished though, right? I don't think that black will go away. Oh. There might be different settings, but they're not black so much. Hmm. Well, anyway, he really cranked up the power because it really wasn't etching like all the way. It was pretty faint. So now you're getting the sparkler effect that we're used to seeing when laser is running. And I guess we're gonna find out what what this does. Cameron was wary of using this much power to begin with. He used much, much less power. And we probably, baby, uh, Goldilocks condition, you know, not too hot, not too cold. We need to get it just right. So we'll see how this works. Uh, but we'll be back. Okay, well, we had a little little excitement we set up set off the smoke detector and Cameron has his giant whatever this is running jet filter of some sort we're hoping that helps we still don't have the enclosure and we should but it's on back order through the end of November out of China so we're kind of stuck um, so this is the etching now it's not supposed to be black but Cameron's gonna run a cleanup pass for it and we're going to see if we can clean it up and make it, you know, just look like brushed brass versus the black. So we'll find out. But that's what we ended up with. And we'll be back. Okay, we're back with the cleanup path. And we don't know what the setting should be, but it should be removing some of the black. Maybe. It looks like it is a little bit. So um, we've seen people do this a lot with coins that are brass. Oh yeah, that is cleaning up some. What settings did you use? Um, speed of 1500, power of 60, and I think a frequency of 60 also. Okay. Yeah, that's helping a lot. So we'll see if it's going to be enough or if we're going to want to do another pass. The tough part about using this laser is that you you can't see what you have if you're wearing these protective glasses until you stop the machine. But Cameron felt the uh, the etching and said that it felt like significant, right? So now brass is probably the softest metal we'll end up working with, which is actually the reason we're cutting this. It's going to be like a charm, like a bag charm or something for a friend of ours. Uh, so we'll be, I'm curious to see how it cuts. Because we have designs in the middle of the wings and then we'll cut the whole shape out. Um, so it's going to do another pass going this direction. So we'll be back to show you what we get after the cleanup pass. Okay, the machine is done and we have our safety glasses removed. So you can see that it really cleaned up a lot of that char. Now this smoke, I mean, it still needs to be cleaned up, but you can see the etching versus the shiny metal. And now we're gonna move on to the cutting stage. So that, that will be um, another first for us in terms of you know cutting brass. So we'll be back. 
Okay, so all the little lines you see in red there on this ladybug, including the little eyes at the top, are the things that are going to be cut first. Cameron says it's a three second cut, so we don't know if that's going to be enough to make it fall through or anything, but we're... I'm sure it's going to take a lot of passes. A lot of passes? Okay. So you're, how many passes are you set up to do right now? I don't know. You said Just you one? Do one. Let's do one and see if it does anything, and then we'll go from there. Okay, so we're at 90% power, 100 millimeters per second, and nothing happened. Oh. Did you, is this a second pass? Oh, uh, I guess, did nothing happen? Oh, there oh, we go. Yeah, that was one pass. That was one pass? Well, I don't see any fa anything falling out, so... What's it doing now? It's just sitting there. It's doing oh, nothing. it's doing nothing. The, I... red, the red laser is following the outlines. Okay. That's why you see all that flashing. Okay. So, I'd, I'd do a couple more passes at least. So these are cutting passes for in the middle, and then we will cut out the whole thing. I'm waiting for like a clink. I'm just gonna say it's like a thing. Okay. So some people, we see them like poke these little pieces out at the end of a cut. Um, I was hoping that they would drop out, but we'll see. And are we going to want to do a cleaning pass over the whole thing before we do the cutout around the entire perimeter? No, I don't know. no? Okay. All right, so that's done. I don't know, do you want to... It looks very charred. Okay. I'm thinking you might need a cleaning pass, but we'll see. Well, it's going to be polished anyway. Oh, okay. All right. So, more passes, I guess. That little space in between the antennas for like a strip of leather or something to, um, you know, attach this to. I think it's done, honey. He walked away from me, so I don't know what's going on. You want to do some more or do you want to try and poke at something? Do ten more, or okay. Okay. So some of the coins we've seen people do are like five, six hundred passes to do these uh, what they call height maps. So it would give you a very three-dimensional look, um, just like you know the the quarter that you have in your pocket. Only these are a lot deeper, thicker than what you see on your, the coins in your pocket. And of course, those coins are minted, right? They're stamped, they're not lasered. So, that was 10 more. I lost one over the last. Yeah, me too. I was gonna say it would be helpful to know how many passes, but, you know, I would say easily 50 is what we're gonna need. I don't see any daylight or any laser light coming through. Well, actually, I see a little bit. But I don't know if it's a reflection. Going through and it's reflecting off of the Okay, so we're getting there. Yeah. Do you 
want to tap it or more? We'll go for 20. Oh, going to pass. So at this point, you guys can see this better than we can. I think that filter is helping a lot. Did you disable the smoke detector? No? Okay, so it is helping a lot. Can you do 20? Yeah. showing you this in real time. Also, keep in mind that we do not know what we're doing. That should be obvious to you, actually. But, uh, yeah, I do too. I think after this time, you can tap it and they might fall out. Uh, I'm not sure what parts of that one yet, but I'm trying to spot the lasers and I'm hitting the uh, heat sink. So, unlike wood, where we have voids in the layers between the sawdust and the glue, this graph should be manufactured in a pretty even way, right? In terms of the spread of the alloys and stuff? Yeah, it's also starting to work. The uh, are that's hot. Yeah. Do you want to try it? I can see this how it is moved. It's moved? Yeah, it'll pop up a little bit. But it's not falling through. I no. can smell it. Not yet. Alright, well, you're right, it is warped. I wonder if we can unwarp it. Doing, doing another 20 passes. Yeah. Would it help if it didn't do 20 like per dot or per area? Like if it did one the whole time and then two the whole time, like to give it a chance to cool from spot yeah. to spot? Warping is something you don't have to worry about with the six brass coins. I got, I think they were six millimeters that I bought, but they'll be here tomorrow. So that's over a quarter inch thick. And they're meant, you know, for height map. This is interesting though because brass is so soft. Can you tap, tap, tap? I see that heart has moved for sure, but it's not falling out. Yeah. None of them are. Pardon? None of them are. Nothing's falling out. Well, can you set it up to do like not 20 at one time? Can you make it do one whole pass? Oh, really? I think so. Because that might keep it from warping or from getting any more warmth, but you guys can see it's definitely warping. But we might be able to correct that. We'll see. Okay. We'll see. So it's just going to go around and round and round instead of focusing on one area, which I hope will help. I mean, we should try this again at some point and do one where it just does this over and over again and gives the other places a little bit of an opportunity to cool off. 
not much because it's pretty fast. I'm gonna come back. This is already getting pretty long. I can't imagine that you're all hanging in there. So I'll come back and when we have the whole thing cut out. Okay, we've gotten some things to poke through now. And the less energy we need to use to further warp this thing, the better. We actually, from the last video where I said I would come back, we haven't run it again. The camera was just poking it. Yeah, you can see that's getting ready to give way. Yeah. You guys can probably see that some of the metal has turned white or silver and Cameron thinks it's because of all the heat from the, the fiber laser. So all of this is going to need to be smoothed and polished. I guess we're going to need a few more passes for a few more areas. And trying to decide. Do you have a piece of paper or something? Yeah, because like you can see the heat sink sort of your way. Oh, I'm just gonna. Oh. So you can see what has cut out and what hasn't. So. Are you going to do a few more passes? Yeah, I'm going to make an adjustment so I don't want to lose all the stuff that still hasn't Okay. Out. All right. So we'll be back. Okay. Well, this is sad, but while Cameron was poking it, he moved it. You can see the mirrored lines. So what he's done is he's relined it back up. We're just seeing if we can cut the whole thing out. Um, this is obviously going to have to be redone from start to finish, but what we have learned is that he should have started out with the etching at the higher power because the lower power was never going to cut it and that moving forward instead of cutting around the same area 20 times or 50 times in a row and then going on to the next area we should do these circular passes where every area gets one pass and then another pass so that the metal doesn't get so hot in the, you know, in a concentrated area. So if we get this out tonight, uh, it's gonna be messed up, but we'll show you what we have. In the end, um, this is programmed to do 50 passes. Oh, yeah. We should have bolted down this vise. Cameron bought this vise um, about a week ago, and this thing weighs a ton, but he moved it anyway and um, it holds the metal obviously when you're when you're cutting it's adjustable and what do you pay for this? 200? 250? Um, so between that and the heat sink I think the heat sink is what 30 bucks or something like that but you need the heat sink if you're going to save the uh, bed of your laser for sure so, but the vise, I think, is also critically important. But all these holes make it so you can clamp that thing down, and we did not do that. I'm going to say we generously here because he should have. Um, but, okay, so that's 50 passes. 
while I've been blabbing. Do you want to poke it gently so you don't move it? No? All right, so we're going to run it some more. I will shoot you a still when we have some. So I'm back because I wanted to show you guys how this is going. It's um, engraving. The laser is hitting the heat sink. And you can see that we're getting a cut all the way through. And we're somewhere between 50 and 100 passes at this point. Uh, okay, so it just finished. All right, so we're at 100. Are you going to poke it or not? Yeah. I do not know. Is it behind your computer? Yeah. Gently. Not ready. It's going to take more than gently. So do you think 50 more or 100 more? No, um, then later. Go another 50? All right. So, more than anything, I just wanted you guys to see why the heat sink is important to saving your bed. Go ahead and start, honey. So, it went through in some of the areas because you could see the light hitting the laser, or hitting the heat sink. But it hasn't gone all the way through everywhere, so it hasn't fallen out. 300 passes, we think. I think we lost count, but you see that has come out there. It's going to be very hot. All right, so there it is. We'll clean it up and I will post a still of what we've got. Like I said, we're going to have to do it again. So this hasn't been filed or smoothed, but and you can see the mistakes, of course, because with the, the cut line, but this is what we ended up with. So first experiment in cutting and etching brass.